In this example, we will look at how to deal with a super node when applying node voltage method. A super node can arise due to a voltage source connected between two essential nodes. So let's apply node voltage method to this given circuit and see how to deal with a super node. The first step is to identify essential nodes. So an essential node is where three or more circuit elements meet. So this given circuit has one, two, and three essential nodes. We need to select a reference node. So let's make this bottom node the reference node and we label the other essential nodes as V1 and V2. Before we apply Kirchhoff current law to these two nodes, we need to check for the possibility of a super node. And in this case, we can see that the voltage source is directly connected between two essential nodes. So this is a super node case. Let's see how to deal with a super node. So what we do is we treat the super node as a single node and then we apply Kirchhoff current law to it as per normal. So let's assume branch currents flowing away from this super node. So here we have four branch currents that are flowing away from the super node. We are treating V1 and V2 and this voltage source as a super node. Let's apply Kirchhoff current law to the super node. So what we get is this branch current, this branch current through the 50 ohm resistor is V1 minus 0 over 50. We can see that in this branch, there is an independent current source. So this branch current, it must be equal to the current source. And we can see that this branch current direction is the same as the current source direction. So what we get is plus two. Now we move to the other side of the super node and continue the process of applying Kirchhoff current law. So this branch current through the 150 ohm resistor is V2 minus 0 over 150. And then this branch current, we can see that the, these two resistors are in series. So we can exploit this fact and apply Ohm's law to get V2 minus 0 over 75 is equal to 0. So this completes the process of applying Kirchhoff current law to the super node. The next step is to write the super node constraint equation. Normally, node voltage method requires application of Kirchhoff current law. But in order to write the super node constraint equation, we need to apply Kirchhoff's voltage law which states that the algebraic sum of voltages around a closed path is zero. And we use a positive sign for a voltage drop with passive sign convention. So let's see how to write the super node constraint equation in a systematic fashion. Recall that a node voltage is defined as a voltage rise with respect to ground. So V1 is defined as a voltage rise with respect to ground and V2 is a voltage rise with respect to ground, irrespective of whether V1 and V2 have positive or negative values. So this means we can represent the super node as follows. So we can represent V1 as a voltage rise with respect to ground. And then we have the 25 volt voltage source. And then we can also represent V2 as a voltage rise with respect to ground. So th this is the reason why we represent V1 and V2 
with this polarity because these are voltage rise with respect to ground. Now we can apply Kirchhoff voltage law to this circuit and the direction doesn't matter. So suppose we assume this direction then applying Kirchhoff voltage law going from minus we start at V1 so going from minus to plus is a voltage rise so we associate a negative sign with this going from plus to minus is a voltage drop so we have a positive sign for a voltage drop so we get plus 25 and then going from plus to minus is another voltage drop so we get plus V2 is equal to 0. So this gives us the super node constraint, constraint equation. When applying Kirchhoff voltage law to the super node to get the super node constraint equation, the assumed direction of the current does not matter. For instance, if we had started with the opposite direction, then let's see what we end up with. Following this assumed current direction, we start at V2. So going from minus to plus is a voltage rise. So this gives minus V2. Going from minus to plus is another voltage rise. So we get minus 25. And then going from plus to minus is a voltage drop. So we get plus V1 is equal to zero. Looking at these two equations, we can see that they are basically identical. And if I multiply this equation, both sides of this equation with minus one, we get this equation. So these two equations are essentially the same. And this shows that the assumed direction of the current does not matter. For this circuit, we now have two equations and two unknowns and these can be easily solved to get the solution. We can use Mathematica to obtain the solution and in this case using the solve command the solution can be obtained as shown here. Solving these two equations we can show that V1 is equal to minus 37.5 volts and V2 is equal to minus 62.5 volts. The final step now is to solve for the desired circuit variables. And in this circuit, we are asked to find the power associated with the current source. So the power associated with the current source is given by the voltage drop across the current source multiplied by the current we can see that the current source is directly connected between node 1 and ground and since V1 is defined as a voltage rise with respect to ground we can associate this polarity with the voltage drop. So the power associated with the current source is the voltage V1 multiplied by the current which is 2 amps now we apply passive sign convention to decide the sign of the power calculation and we can see that this current is entering the terminal marked plus so we assign a plus sign to the power calculation and finally we can now substitute values so this gives minus 37.5 times 2 which is minus 75 watt. So this answer is negative, which is signifying that the current source is delivering power to this circuit. We can easily use PSPICE to verify our answer. This is the same circuit simulated in PSPICE. And we can show that the node voltages V1 and V2 are exactly as we calculated. We can also simulate the circuit in LTSPICE and after running the run command we can show that the node voltage here 
is minus 37.5 volt and this is indicated in the bottom left corner of the screen and the node voltage here is minus 62.5 volts and if I hover the cursor over the current source we can see that the power dissipated is minus 75 watt. So this confirms the solution.